Ludacris Plus is on. Are you guys ready? Steady, go! Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver. I hope you're doing very well. Today's a special video. We've actually got this in our hands, a P100D L Model X. Thank you to uh, London Tesla Chiswick uh, for giving me this for the day. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Only 125 miles on the clock too. So this ludicrous version, basically today we're just going to be seeing, is the speed worth the upgrade? Do you use it in day to day? Do we use it everywhere? And what does it really feel like? So I've got this camera on and of course I've got a rear camera because I didn't know where to put it to be honest. So I just thought I'd put it back there. And I can't attach it to here because this isn't my car and I don't want to stick anything to a brand new lovely Model X and leave a little sticky mark. Uh, there will be a sticky mark though, probably from the front and the back, to be totally honest with the speed of this. So let's go and have a drive, shall we? I'm gonna let um, all the cars kind of go that are, are in front of me and stuff because I wanna be, I do wanna be last out. So I spoke to the guys at Tesla and I was like, where can I do launches around here and like, you know, really give it, give it a good hoon in? And they kind of said the best place to do it is on an on-ramp to the motorway so i'm going to go around this really slowly allowing the car in front to uh, have some more space and then as soon as we kind of come out onto it i'm just going to put my foot down now yeah you probably won't be able to see the speed but i'll tell you when i hit 60 or 70 even you ready you steady go oh my god that's 70 right there that is oh <laughs> that actually not only does it kick you back it takes your breath away. That is outstanding. Woo! Oh my God, that is so cool. Okay, well, we, we can't obviously keep doing that, uh, but that's that's one use case of having the insanely fast speed. Uh, as we've got this Porsche here, now these are actually on a test drive, and I've just seen them absolutely floor it. So they look like they're having a lot of fun. But otherwise, would you use the speed in a day-to-day -day drive on the motorway and such? Probably not. Like, I, I don't see really the point on the motorway and whatnot. Look at that Porsche go. It is just gone. Absolutely gone. Okay, I, I don't know if maybe we should do, do a goer as well and see what it's like. So we're driving at 60 at the moment. And, you know, I want to overtake and go into that right-hand lane. And, oh my God, like 10 miles an hour is it's like that. Literally, it goes from a nice calm ride to your license is gone in a split second. That is... That truly, truly is ludicrous. Uh, okay, so I want to come off the next off-ramp because I want to do that again. So <laughs> I want to keep on coming off the off-ramps and go back onto them. So this does not 60 in something like 2.8 seconds. My Model X does it in about five seconds or, or there or about. So it's pretty, it's pretty shifty compared to my one. We've actually another Model X in front of us and that red color is quite nice just picks up though we're actually following that Porsche as well down here and we're coming off as well I assume they're gonna go and do a lap around and then floor it uh, up on the other way so I might actually do the same thing with them and just like just join them I'm really hoping that my camera survives on the back and doesn't doesn't get lost in the sheer power But yeah, so what else does the uh, P100DL come with? Well, it has, this is standard. It has the, all the carbon and stuff as standard. Uh, it has the big alloys as well, the 22s on this, which look amazing. It used to have an active aero spoiler, but now I'm looking at the back, it looks like it's still up. So maybe they took that away and now it's just a normal spoiler. Uh, but to be honest, I would always have the spoiler up anyway, so I think it looks better like that. Uh, other things that this has obviously is the, the biggest battery pack, um, the performance upgrade and then the ludicrous upgrade. So I think the performance upgrade is something like, this is totally off the top of my head, it's about 8,000 pounds and then to get the ludicrous part is another 11,000 pounds and yeah, so it's it's quite it's quite expensive, but it is quite fun. But the reason I'm actually taking this out today, oh, I assume it has like all this Alcantara as well as like standard. The reason I'm taking this out today is because I'm looking to change my Model X. Now I've got a 2017 75D, one of the first ones actually in the UK, and I think I got it the day before the delivery date because I wanted to record, so it might have been the first one, uh, like registered to a normal owner. But uh, it's it's not slow by any means necessary. It's insanely fast, but there is a faster model, and 
why not get the faster model is what I'm trying to teach myself. Um, so I'm gonna see if it's really worth the, the money. I can think of so many other things I could spend that money on, including pretty much a Model 3 if I wanted. If I just got a new 75D, you could also probably get a Model 3 for the same price. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of it like that. I'm trying to think of these extra things you could potentially get with it. So I don't know if I'll be going for this one, but I have just taken out a Model S P100DL. That's a lovely Ferrari there. Uh, literally just, I swapped out the Model S and just jumped into this. And that was a rocket ship. It was, it felt, it felt quicker as I guess it should. I'm actually going all the way right here. It did feel a little bit quicker than what this has given me so far, but we're gonna give it another go. So I'm gonna come off here and we're gonna floor it up the uh, runway or the run on, run off, whatever it's called. Then we're gonna come off at the next service station, do it again. And then if there's another junction, we'll do it again there as well. Now this car actually has the really, really nice white interior and I'm really nervous about any of my stuff touching it. Like, because I'm really worried it's gonna get dirty. Even like, I've got a bag down here. And I'm gonna put it over there because I don't want it rubbing like brown on it or, or anything like that. I want this to stay like pristine because it's absolutely glorious. Okay, so we're gonna be coming up this ramp here and I've got a taxi next to me. I'm just gonna give him a look. Oh my God, he gave me the look back. It means it's on. Everyone gives me the look back, it seems. I think I just want them to so that I have an excuse. Not like you need an excuse. Uh, so we're just gonna go in front of him here and then I'm just gonna slow down at this point as we come round. Ready, steady, go. 60, oh my God. That is rapid, but I'll tell you what, it doesn't feel as quick as the Model S. And I know that they're really, really close in terms of power, but this doesn't actually feel the same. It, it really doesn't, as, as a Model X driver, it doesn't feel that much different to my 75D once you get moving and you do that kind of push, you know, if you're going from like 30 to 60 or something like that. That's where I was hoping this would feel way, way quicker but oddly, it just doesn't. Maybe it's because I've just come out of the Model S P100D L, and that really is ludicrous. Like, just bonkers. But the thing is, it doesn't have the space that the Model X has, which is why I'm uh, looking at the Model X. So we've put it into autopilot now, just to see how the autopilot is on it. And are we coming off at the next junction? I'll come off if I can get back on it. Yeah, you can, okay. I don't know why I have to do max battery power and this? I don't think I do, actually. Okay. Oh, even just that. So I just wanted to see what it was like to get off the line there. And even that was absolutely rapid. Okay, I'm going to come across. And yes, bring it on. Oh. So we've got some sort of purple thing here. I'm not sure what that's about. On the dash down here. Some kind of purple line appeared. But this thing really is breakneck. It really, really is. Would I upgrade to it though? I, I don't think I'm going to, I don't, I don't know. If I was going for a Model S, to be totally honest, if my fiance said that she thinks a Model S would be big enough, I would probably get a Model S P100DL just because that felt so, so quick. Whereas this one, I don't know, maybe it's because it's big, maybe it's because it's a four by four and you know, a big family SUV. It just doesn't feel quite as rapid, but I know that it is obviously just as rapid because um, I can see the figures, 2.8 seconds is blistering, but it just doesn't quite have that same real like thumping go um, that I think the P100DL Model S had. And I think I'm missing that. This is a tight little whoopah. I've just realized that actually the 22s don't seem to come standard, but these are the new like silver gray turbines, I believe, with the red calipers and they look sick too. So the idea is that you should be able to just walk up to the car with your key and then the door should open and present itself. But I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm really struggling to get it to work. And to be honest, it's not even seeming to notice the key. I don't know if this is because it's a new one. It's not been set up properly yet. I, I don't know. But with a double tap, the door will pop open like so and um, open wide enough for a very, very thin person. That's very offensive for us bigger people. And again, it closes with a triple tap as well. Now, what you can do is double tap 
to open that door and then if you double tap again it will open that door as well that door a lot wider apparently your passengers are a lot bigger so that's pretty cool it's a pretty cool feature that now it, i think comes standard with them whereas before it never came standard let's pop this up and have a look at the back seat shall we so again this isn't new to me i've obviously had a model x for ages but this new seating setup is and this is the six seater which is actually what i was looking to go for initially but decided not to this is like a five grand option seems pretty insane this is going to be an ultimate test then so my seat here is in its normal position so this is where i normally sit i'm now sat in the middle seat or the middle row and as you can see my knees are just about touching so i probably wouldn't do a road trip like that so i'd probably do one from about there like that's that's fine that's comfortable you've got to spread your legs a little bit but that's not too bad i feel really big in the back of this for some reason loads of headroom like absolutely loads of headroom because of this glass roof so that's brilliant and the carbon fiber carries its way through the back and actually this is new on mine can you see that on mine it's a switch whereas on this it's actually just a button that looks way way better and also in the back here because of it's expecting you to carry more passengers and stuff they've actually added a second ac unit so you actually get a lot better air back here and it uh, can be hot or cool depending on obviously what uh, your passengers want so let's try and sit in the back i don't think uh, if i'm being honest i'm gonna fit oh christ yeah i like i don't know how to show you that you know i can't fit in the back so in terms of headroom i'm pretty much touching uh, it's like touching cloth pretty much pretty much touching touching window but it is quite nice though and yeah i like it like i, f I feel all right back here except the leg room obviously so kids can definitely sit in the back taller adults or just adults in general probably not it's definitely a four adult two kids it's not all for all for adults finally let's just check the back boot because that's really important uh, but it doesn't actually look like there is one yeah so this would be a slight problem for me there's really a tiny tiny boot space here like you know there's there's a hand just so you can reference it it's really really not big maybe 40 centimeters but you can make it bigger obviously uh by just pressing these buttons press the right buttons you'll make anything bigger and press this button and just like push it yeah you just push it down and then you've got a bigger floor but nothing blocking anything sliding down so loads of stuff would slide there and hit things i've just noticed the back of these seats are different they're not glossy black like mine they're now like a weird like leathery fake black i think but of course you do have this space under here and you can use that for your charging cables and extra stuff i don't know i probably wouldn't go for it how do you get these back up do you have to i think you have to lean in press that button and then yeah so you can't actually access it can you pull them up no you have to do that i don't know let me know what you think about the six seat configuration down below i don't think i'm the biggest fan with that being said however i really do like these seats i love the feel the back seats are way more comfortable than i thought and the middle row is like the front row it's beautiful i guess that's what you're paying for is you're paying for those middle row seats so that's pretty much it for the interior the front is the same it's the same size and this does have the adaptive lighting so if you turn right or left uh, i think another light pops on and guides you that way or something i'm, I'm not 100 sure it's something to do with that but otherwise everything else is the same it's 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 lovely it's absolutely lovely ludicrous plus is on are you guys ready steady go 60 oh my god someone count that because that was that was rapid